The Denver Broncos have been full of surprises this season. Every week, it feels like they're pulling something new out of the bag, something no one saw coming. But this time, this feels different. This time, it's not just a good performance or a lucky win. It's a game changer. With their playoff chances hanging in the balance, the Broncos might have just unlocked the one thing that could push them over the edge. We're talking about a team firing on all cylinders, a coach who's been quietly crafting a masterpiece, and a secret weapon that's finally starting to shine. So, what's really going on behind the scenes? And how does this all tie back to their latest performance and the growing hype around this team? Let's break it all down. What's up, buddies? Welcome back. If you're new here, make sure you hit the subscribe button. We cover all AFC West news here on this channel. Let's talk about that last game against the Atlanta Falcons because, wow, what a performance. The Broncos came out swinging and absolutely dominated, leaving no doubt about their intentions for the rest of the season. And honestly, it was a statement win. The numbers tell part of the story. Over 300 passing yards, four touchdowns, just incredible stats. But stats don't always capture the full picture. What stood out most was how the Broncos looked as a team. It felt like everything was finally clicking. The offense wasn't just moving the ball, they were controlling the game, dictating the pace, and keeping the Falcons' defense guessing the entire time. And here's where it gets interesting. Those touchdowns? Two of them came off perfectly executed screen plays. If you've been following the Broncos, you know the screen game hasn't exactly been their strong suit in the past. But this time, it was a completely different story. Every play felt purposeful, like the team had unlocked a new level of confidence. And let's give credit where it's due. Those big plays didn't happen by accident. They came from precise throws, smart decisions, and a quarterback who's growing into his role faster than anyone expected. But hold on, we'll get to him in just a second. First, let's talk about what this win really means. The momentum the Broncos gained from the win over the Falcons is incredible. They proved that the Broncos aren't just surviving, they're thriving. And if this game is any indication, they might be peaking at exactly the right time. Now, speaking of players stepping up and making history, let's talk about one rookie who's been turning heads and just made a little bit of franchise history himself. And here we are, Bo Nix. What can we even say at this point? This rookie is making headlines for all the right reasons. Just when you think you've seen his best, he goes out there and does something no other rookie quarterback in Broncos history has done. He won the AFC Offensive Player of the Week. Not Rookie of the Week, Offensive Player of the Week. That's huge. And honestly, reward doesn't matter, what matters most is how earned it. Over 300 yards passing, four touchdowns, and some throws that had fans shaking their heads in disbelief. And sure, some of those touchdowns came off screens, but anyone watching that game knows there was way more to his performance than just that. Take for example that throw to Cortland Sutton. It was an RPO play that broke down, and Nix had to roll out to his right. With a defender breathing down his neck, he launched it downfield, a perfect pass that Sutton turned into a highlight reel moment. That was luck that comes with skill and hard work. Then there was the pass to Lil Jordan Humphrey, rolling to his left, threading the ball between two Falcons defenders like he had a laser-guided system. It was pinpoint accuracy, the kind you expect from seasoned veterans, not a rookie. And you will also witness that this isn't just a one-off performance. We're starting to see the bigger picture with Bo Nix. He's not just making plays, he's making the kind of decisions that separate the good quarterbacks from the great ones. He's processing defenses, finding the weak spots, and delivering when it matters most. And the interesting thing is, he's still learning. Sean Payton hasn't even opened up the full playbook for him yet. If this is what Knicks can do now, imagine what he'll look like when he's got the entire system at his disposal. Here's the actual thing. What Knicks is doing out there isn't just happening out of nowhere. It's all part of a bigger plan, a system that's finally coming together. And that brings us to the secret weapon that's been quietly transforming this team. Let's get into it. The secret weapon that's been quietly transforming this team. Let's get into it. So, what's this secret weapon that's turning the Broncos into a team no one wants to face? It's not just one player or one play. It's Sean Payton's playbook. And let me tell you why this thing is a masterpiece. For years, Broncos fans have been frustrated with an offense that felt, let's be honest, predictable. But now, it's like Sean Payton has unlocked a whole new level of creativity. And it's all coming together with precision, especially in the screen game. Let's take a closer look at those screens from the Falcons game. Two of Nix's touchdowns came from screens, but these weren't your run-of-the-mill plays. They were beautifully designed, perfectly executed, and left the defense scrambling. 
One of them went to Marvin Mims where you could see the offensive line pull out, creating a lane so clean you'd think they rehearsed it a hundred times. Peyton has a way of using these plays at exactly the right moment. The defense gets comfortable and boom, he hits them with a wrinkle they weren't ready for. It's a chess match and right now Peyton is several moves ahead. We're seeing an offense that's versatile, unpredictable, and frankly, dangerous. One game, Nix is leading in rushing yards. The next, he's dominating from the pocket. One week, it's a run-heavy attack. The next, it's a flurry of quick passes. That kind of flexibility makes it nearly impossible for opposing defenses to game plan effectively. What's even more exciting is how this offense is evolving. Peyton isn't throwing everything at Nix all at once. Instead, he's introducing new elements week by week, allowing the rookie to grow into the system. And let's give a shout out to the offensive line here. None of this works without them. They've been rock solid, giving Knicks the time and space to operate. It's a partnership, great coaching, great execution, and a team that's starting to believe in itself. All right, let's talk playoffs. Because for the first time in what feels like forever, the Broncos are not just in the conversation. They're a serious contender. Right now, the team has a 68% chance of making the playoffs. And honestly, it feels like hope. The Broncos aren't relying on luck or fluke plays. They're building something sustainable. They've shown they can dominate on the ground, win with their defense, and now light up the scoreboard with an explosive passing attack. That kind of versatility is exactly what you need when the stakes get higher in December and January. But it's not going to be easy. Their upcoming schedule is no walk in the park. The Raiders and Browns are next, and both teams have been scrappy this season. The Raiders especially love to play spoiler when it comes to division rivals. And the Browns? Let's just say their defense is no joke. Here's the good news, though. The Broncos control their destiny. They don't have to rely on other teams losing or some wild tiebreaker scenarios. If they keep playing the way they have been, if they stick to the formula that's working, they're in. But, of course, every journey has its challenges. Injuries are always a factor, especially at this point in the season, and the Broncos are no exception. So let's take a moment to address those hurdles and what they mean for this team's playoff hopes. The biggest loss? Delarian Turner Yell. The backup safety and special teams ace is officially out for the season with a torn ACL. It's tough for any player to go down, but for someone like Turner Yell, who was carving out a solid role for himself, it's even harder. The good news is that Keaton Smith has stepped up, and seems ready to fill that spot. But losing depth at this point in the season is never ideal. Then there's Ben Powers. He picked up a shoulder injury late in the game against the Falcons. Now the initial signs look promising. He's expected to recover without missing time, but it's definitely something to keep an eye on. Shoulder issues can linger, especially for offensive linemen who are constantly in the trenches. On the bright side, Brandon Jones is back at practice after missing some time with an abdominal injury. Getting him healthy again is a big boost for this team, especially with the kind of versatility he brings to the defense. So, what's next for the Broncos? Can they keep this momentum alive and make a real push for the playoffs? Or will the challenges ahead prove to be too much? One thing's for sure, this team is giving us plenty to talk about. And now, it's over to you, Broncos country. What do you think? Is this the year the Broncos finally break through and make some noise in the playoffs? Drop your thoughts in the comments below because I'd love to hear what you have to say. As always, thanks for watching and don't forget to hit the like button, subscribe, and ring the bell so you don't miss any updates. Until next time, let's see what surprises this team has in store for us next.